Hello and welcome to another Real Estate Answer Show. My name is Donald Norton with the Norton Group, and uh, we have as, uh, as an old-time guest, Ross Blowing from Colony Real Estate and also uh, a song of old times. Um, so we'll talk about real estate first, and maybe we'll throw in some questions about what's going on in the Somerville in the news lately. So and in, in also in the fake news because you kind of got to cover all the news. Cover all the news. all the news, right? Well, actually, the fake news is news when it's fake news, and then we talk about it as news. So I guess it's news. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, the real estate market doing real well. Um, we are having a boom of a year here in Somerville. Sure. Prices are out of uh, out of the spectrum. And Drive down every street, and there's a construction crew on every single street right. working on houses, and uh, the prices have gone through the roof. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, supply. I think we're kind of sh- a little short on supply hmm. as far as what's for sale. A lot of condos for sale, though. You know, and it was uh, on Facebook, which you're not on, um, because he's still in the 1800s. I would rather think. So anyways, on Facebook, they were asking the question, Somerville people were asking the question, uh, Somerville is not the same Somerville. So I thought I'd address some of those issues that they're saying, Somerville is not the same Somerville, and, and this is bad, and, and the mayor is wrong because he did this, and the Board of Aldermen did this. And uh, the real estate people did it. Yes, uh, yeah, we create the prices. And so I, there was a couple of there was a couple of statements on there. Um, some of all has changed. Um, it there are it's it's all condominiums and all new people in the city and 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 you know bring back the old some of all. But when I look at the people who are writing the negatives about some of all, it's already the people who already moved out. It's so they so so I jump in and say, well, I've noticed that uh, Harry, who is you know that's a, we're not gonna say the real name, but Harry uh, noticed uh, I know for a fact you sold out ten years ago and you were very happy jumping down to Florida with your yeah. with your extra cash from the family house that you've lived in all your life and mm-hmm. you decided to move down there. Well, yes, I did, but some of all has changed. Well, do you think you might be part of that change that, that you left? Yeah. And so some, I think what it is is, I know you told me the other day, can you make sure I talk a little? No, no, no. <laughs> it's actually, so, you're on a roll. Get, uh, let it so go. I was telling him, I said, you know, my mother, who's from North Cambridge, who was from North Cambridge, used to come to Solville as a little girl to swim in the Solville Beach. And Solville was a very, very big Republican, waspy city. Um, white yeah, Anglo Saxon Protestants, and the uh, it wasn't yet um, it, the Irish had moved into up in North Cambridge and the French French Quarter up there, so so some of all was a um, in the fifties they closed down the West End, and some of all changed again, right. and the West End people thousands upon thousands of people moved to some of all. Um, in the 50s. And then you have in the 70s, you have a lot of Portuguese people that came into the city. Again, the movement to where, as a kid, I used to go to Stoneham for, sure. for, a, uh, for a trip to well, the country. Go, go back to the turn of the century when Somerville was a, a bunch of uh, farms and uh, Well, sedate, that's be, uh, way back in the be, 1800s. Well, listen to my line of thinking here. And uh, you go back to that and then uh, the people working in the packing houses and all the factories along some of the left became prosperous. And uh, we had a huge building boom in the roaring 20s mm-hmm. that put up most of these two family, three families that we see today were built in the, uh, the teens, 20s, and 30s. Right. And that changed the whole composition of the city immensely. Then World War II had a huge effect on the city. The Charlestown uh, Navy Yard was loaded with, uh, what, 100,000 workers or something. Half of them lived in Somerville. At that time, there were like 90,000 people living in Somerville, stacked up, you know. uh, No, 100 and some odd thousand, uh, 117,000. And then Somerville also had the Ford Motor Company, had First National Stores. Right. The main headquarters of First National Stores was right here. This transition has been rolling So the city has always changed. Right. So, so, So we're... So we're so what I said was I, I just want to add one thing mm-hmm. though that back in the 1980s I joined the Somerville Kiwanis Club 
And you uh, didn't, we, really? yes, yeah, and we we had to make a little speech. And uh, as a real estate expert, I explained that eventually all these houses they knew in some way were going to convert to condominium. And all I can remember was Tom Kelly, who was the president of the Somerset Savings Bank, reeling in laughter. When I got done talking, he says, you're out of your mind. <laughs> It'll never happen. <laughs> well, the, 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 thank God it did happen because it created a tax base. Because unlike Medford or Cambridge or Boston or Arlington or any of the towns, Somerville was right. tiny. We needed and we base. needed a ta- we need to grow our yeah. tax base, and the only way you can grow a tax base is if you expand out, right. or in our case, up. So I think uh, I think the new Somerville is a is a is an experience for. I talk to a lot. Well, of course we're in the business, so you know I've sold to a lot of houses. I get called to list a house, sell it to somebody that's coming in. Got a deal going on next week where a couple's from Australia. And they've been here for uh, 10 years, young couple, married, got a kid, and, and they're moving to Somerville. They love it. Or uh, uh, Many, many people that I hear stories well, you've from. You've people from England. You've yeah, people. This, is, this is a great immigrant city. The transition is that every 20 some odd years, I started as a kid being raised in a Baptist uh, foster right. home. Right. Going to a Baptist church and then going to St. Benedict's church, the Baptist church was wall to wall with people. Yeah, yeah. So today you can't. You, there's not a. There's only one Baptist church left in the city, right. and only one congregation, all on one Presbyterian. And, and mo- most of the members there are from out of town. This is possible. Yeah. Yes, it's possible. Yeah. So I think when things people say things like you know, some of those change, and, and then the Curta Tony is the blame for it, and. And you know we really gotta you know gotta get rid of him as mayor. I think Curtatoni, Joe Curtatoni, has made this city a a, a a a more attractive city to come to, and along with the, with the way they do business in Somerville. I mean, I don't agree with Joe Curtatoni's uh, a lot of his political stance, but that's okay because I know that he loves Somerville and he does. He does think of Somerville. You know, he I, doesn't do anything to hurt the I'm city. I'm glad we're having this conversation because I remember Mayor Joe when he was about six years old riding in the back seat of his father's Lincoln Town Car. His father owned a nursing home. Right, on, 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 on uh, Adam, ba- Street. Adam Street. And I lived at the top of Adam Street. I owned the six family there. I remember Joe when he was a kid. And his father, by the way, was a wonderful, very nice, very gym. nice family. Cosmo, was and they a, immigrated from Italy. They came over from Gaeta. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I, in fact, I got a lot of my friends are from Gaeta. A lot of people that, yeah. that we have people that work for That's us right. that are from yeah. Gaeta. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, he he grew up in the city, and uh, he knows the city, and uh, I think that uh, he has opened the city to uh, the population. And we've gone, uh, you know, from low tech to high tech, and uh, we're we're not Slummerville, right? And that's the greatest. Right. Th- that's I mean, the, when you and I started in the real estate business, people were burning the houses down they and moving bur- out. Oh, the, they were burning the them on Friday night in the seventies. Was a uh, <laughs> was a uh, with bonfires all over the city. Go sit in front of the fire yeah. station and pass the popcorn. Exactly. Yeah. And then, I mean, we we smile and laugh about <laughs> it now, but it was very sad then. Right. And it was a uh, uh, it was a very bad time, and some of all had a bad reputation. Right. When the the gangsters have gone, yeah. the city's cleaned up its act. Yeah. And I blame it. I, I put the I put that all on Joe Curtatoni, and I and th- that he's done such a great job for for the, for the city. Um, and as a real estate broker, mm-hmm. and as a real estate broker yourself, and we've yeah. been in the business. I've been doing it forty years this year. Over You're 40, doing it for over, over forty. Yeah. As a real estate broker, uh, he has, I hear people all the time, I want to buy a house, I want to live in Somerville, I like the mayor, I like the way this mayor, mayor, the mayor yeah, stands. You, you know. I mean, again, we may not agree politically on everything, right. but but it, but in his heart, yeah. he loves, he loves hear, the city. You hear the tenants 
here and that they can't wait to move in. You know, 20 years ago, it was, I want to go to Alston, I want to go to Brighton, but now it's, I want to come to Somerville. Yeah. Remember you know? the days that they would walk in the office and say, I want to be in zip code 02141? Yeah. Now they say, I want to be in zip code 02144. 44, right. <laughs> so, or 43, yeah. or 45. So, yeah, it really doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> any any place in Somerville right. is uh, hot. So, so when you know, all this stuff that's going on in the in the in the city and and you know the grand thing about the city is that uh the other good thing about the city is that we have a very good board of aldermen i can remember days of walking you know on a boring night we'd go to the board of aldermen meeting and watch fist fights okay. and watch yeah. uh and very interesting and very uh emotionally i i remember one night when the president of the board of aldermen destroyed the destroyed the podium oh, yeah. from from <laughs> gaveling so we won't uh, mention so his high, name. we won't mention names uh because he's still around and uh the um uh, yeah. i remember I mean, we have such a great we've got such a great history and it's a great city really? and it's and and it's uh we have assembly square i walk out of my door over to Summit Square, and I can't believe this is Somerville. Yeah, I can't uh, believe know, that this used to be Assembly Square back in the eighties. You remember Assembly Square back in the eighties? I was very upset that we had never developed that land uh, after H.K. Porter had right. vacated, uh, because we lost a lot of tax money. Yep. You know, and, and Somerville does not have a big industrial base, but I have to say, Assembly Square was worth the wait. He has he has spearheaded that square more than anybody. More yeah. than I, I think. Oh uh, yeah, no, he carried the ball. The this whole this way he, yeah. this guy and and again, I'm not politically. It I, took a lot <laughs> longer than say Medford. Yeah. Medford built there. The, uh, yeah, but you know now landing. we're the envy of Memphis. Right. And now we're the envy oh. of Arlington. Yeah. And now we're the envy of Cambridge. It took a lot longer, but I think they they got it done right. Last Friday night, I walked out over to Assembly Square, and it was just, I walked all around the square, and yeah. I didn't run into one person I know. That's amazing. It's amazing. Because you it know everyone. Too, and I know everybody, <laughs> yeah. So I went, walked around Assembly Square, and I'm not, I don't find that frightening. I find that, yeah. I find that great. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I so walk out, is. so I, I just sold a house in, uh, in, in, in Reading. Yes. I walk into a store in Reading, and I run into five people from Somerville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, yeah. I go. I went. In, I went into Dunkin' Donuts and Stone on Main Street, and I, I get to the car, and yeah. and I get horns beeped at me. <laughs> people from Somerville, that, right. because that's where everybody's gone. They went, yes. So they, so it's fine. So the city is doing really well, and the mayor is. Uh, the mayor has um, the mayor and the board of aldermen. You know, uh, uh, Bob McGuadas, Mary Ann Houston. You know, uh, Dennis Sullivan and Bob, um, Bob and, McWaters is going to be the best alderman in some of them. Well, he's a constituent alderman. He does. I have had more people who say to me, I've had I, three I people who didn't say. vote for him four I've years ago Bob, that now vote for him. I've known Bob for 30 some odd years, and I got to say, he's, he's he's one of the hardest working. He is a very, and he's an honest guy. Yeah, conscientious. Yeah, Mary Ann is the same way. And yeah. we, we, we're fortunate we have a board of aldermen that is very good. Yeah. I know that people listening to this, I'm not saying like, oh uh, my God. Yeah, but anybody who screaming. knows me and knows Ross, and we've been here, I've been here all my life. I'm here 70 years. I'm married, by the way, 50 years last Congratulations. week. Congratulations. Thank you very, yeah, thank you very much. that is a huge milestone. Yes. It's more like a millstone, but no, a milestone. Yeah. <laughs> and like I can't think years. of too many things that I regret. <coughs> well, maybe one Maybe or two. one or two, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. We won't talk oh, we won't. That. we won't say anything. Don't go but, there. But, uh, um, and, and I'm 70 years old. I, I, was fort I was very, I was raised in a, ba uh, a foster home. I went to live with a with a single mother. But didn't you also sing in the choir down at St. Benedict's? I, no, I never sang in the choir at St. Benedict's. Yeah. I did a little bit at the Grace Baptist. Okay, okay. Yeah, Monsignor Hogan and, uh, knew that I was living in a Baptist house, and he... he, he yeah, he, but you had to he made both. I did. Yeah, I, I, well, well, I had to turn bellows because yeah. they didn't trust me. You, you they, were what we call bi-religious. I was, <laughs> was bi-religious before it was even before fashionable. Before it was in vogue. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I used to go to Bible reading classes yeah. on Wednesday night at, yeah. the, at the church, so I knew more sure. about the Bible than the kids in oh, parochial yeah. oh, school. Well, the, you know, the, the, yeah, you're right. So some of all is, some of all is changed. Some of all is a... 
Um, I'm very proud to say that I, I grew up in Somerville and that the torch is passed on to a new generation, and we hope that that new generation of Somervillians uh, make it a city that they want it to be so they have memories. Let me add to that. You know I love to travel, mm -hmm. and you know I travel all over the world. And I go to faraway places, and you know I love to sail on ships, and I meet a lot of people. And they say, where are you from? I said, Somerville. Oh, I know about Somerville. Yeah. It's like, you do? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like they now know it's next to Cambridge. Yeah. You know, they now know we're calling it the left bank of Cambridge. Yeah. So and, remember uh, that when you go to the polls. You know, I, we, I don't normally uh, – I, I don't normally – Oh, this is not Get a involved, but, show. but I will tell you that uh, uh, Joe Critatoni is. Uh, we need we need him, and we need him to stay there for a, for a while longer, so that the city continues to grow and the city continues to to prosper. And anybody that owns a house and that has lived here for a long time that doesn't have a mortgage on a house, you know, it's a great city for you as well because now you walk outside and the streets are clean. The rubbish. Remember when the rubbish wasn't picked up or the streets weren't cleaned? Oh, I mean, the, the streets the, were falling the, apart. The streets, streets are falling apart. Yeah. Sidewalks. I mean, that doesn't happen anymore. We live in a very, very I, nice city. I remember city. when we had to go down to see the Allman and give him a hundred dollar bill to get the curb cut. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, there was a couple of them that we called, uh, you know, the hundred-dollar bill. Is, uh, you know, yeah. I won't mention any names. So, anyways, let's just uh, quickly. Uh, um, so quickly, there is a. Mm, he used to be a partner of mine in the old Somerville News. Uh, that was a sad story. I bought the paper from Bob Publicover. Yeah. Uh, who I had known. My wife was his first employee, um, and Bob, um, as you know, was very ill. And yes. so I bought the paper from Bob. You did. And I had, uh, that was I had a moves. gentleman who is owned, his family owned a tow yard. Yes. And I selected him as a sort of like a partner. He was never a full partner because mm -hmm. he was never a publisher. Right. Because one of the things that Bob had made me promise was that I wasn't going to give away the paper to another partner that he didn't know. And he didn't know that guy. Right. But then I found out that there were some very, very... Mm, shall we say, um, uh, he had a very <laughs> shaded background. Unsavory. Unsavory background, mm -hmm. and which I never knew about. And yeah. so yeah, yeah, it was a surprise. It was a surprise. And Criminal that, background. And I, although I'm pretty, much, I'm pretty much savvy about what's going on, I, yeah. I have to figure that out that I was probably surprise. drunk during those, day, during yeah. those periods <laughs> that he was going through his uh, period. Yeah. But anyways, um, make a long story short, we now are involved in the Somerville Times, yeah. and I am and you are. And uh, the Somerville Times, we, we don't get political, and we don't do... Um, it's local news. It's local news. And, yeah. you know, and one chit -chat. of the things that I love about the Somerville Times is the focusing in that the reason why the journal failed and the reason why all the rest of them will fail is because they want Boston, they put in Arlington. You can't get in the paper in the Somerville Times unless you are a Somerville, something related to Somerville. We were so good that I deliver the paper to a couple of places in Medford, and Medford just lost their paper. Yeah. And uh, I've been approached by, by individuals at City Hall. They like the product. They love the Somerville Times. Yeah. And they would love a Medford Times. Right. And we've been thinking about it. Yeah. And uh, um, we have thrown it thrown it out there. And, you know, because Medford and Somerville are sort of like people in Medford come to Somerville to shop. And Somerville goes to Medford to shop. I'm always over at the Meadow Glen. You're always over at Station and, and Station mm -hmm. Landing. Right. So, so I think Somerville and Medford has a more of a relationship than... Somerville and Arlington or yeah. Somerville and Cambridge. I think the Somerville Medford relationship is special. They get a great mayor, uh, 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 Stephanie Burke. Yes. Um, yeah. She is a good mayor. Her mm -hmm. first time out, she re reelected. And she has been doing a lot of things. They're building a new police station and a fire station there. So, one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, in over the next couple of months is the possibility of, and if anybody wants to give me their opinion, um, the possibility of having a Medford Times and a Somerville Times or having it the Somerville Medford Times. 
That might be a good idea. So that it would be <laughs> method news and Somerville news, but it would be it would be it would be it would be mixed in. And yeah. there's a lot of things that we could do that would make it one. But some people, you know, I, in method, the from what I get at the Demitz Coffee Shop, I I put about fifty copies there on Wednesday. They're gone by Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy says to me, can you bring some more? You do like Demets. You know, I do, Demets, I do. Demets well, Donuts. Donald <laughs> has been hitting Demets Donuts because, let's face it, we're very few and far between donut places. It's an old donut shop. Right. It's, it's an old donut it's and the coffee kind of place shop. You want to go kind to. of place that you can go and you sit yeah. there and, and people there. I mean, yeah, I did, very nice it, over there. You know, I've there used to be a place in Solville called Johnson's Donuts on yeah. Mystic Avenue. Sure. I don't know if you remember that. Of course. Um, there was a lot of the uh, donut prints, and, West and you know, even Dunkin' Donuts on Middlesex Avenue. When I was a kid, that was it was a better shop. It was a much better place. I mean, it yeah. did luncheons. Did you know yeah, that? Oh, they had counters. With they the, did. Yeah. They had the zigzag counter. Yeah. 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 We used to go there every night, kids from yeah. East Somerville. Oh, look at the donut prints in West Somerville at the Powder House. It was a fantastic place. Oh, my God. That's right, too. I forgot yeah. about that oh, one. Oh, my God. They, yeah, so all the donut it. shops are gone, but except for they do have a, a Union Square donut shop or the, whatever they call it. And I will tell you that they are huge, but they're... I mean, just, I'm a very plain person, so I like the old-fashioned chocolate frosted jelly donut, Eight, whatever. Whatever. But anyway, so, uh, so, yeah. so that's a possibility that we're talking about that. Yeah. And um, we, do, we do a lot of business in Medford. I do a lot of business in Absolutely. Medford. Absolutely. So it's a possibility. So. Absolutely. But to get back to the fake news, so if oh. you're on Facebook, you should look up a guy named... They think it's me, by the way. Did I tell you that? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. think it's me. I wish no, I, I mean, look. Just for the record, I am. Um, we don't get involved in this stuff. No, uh, no. We, we might read it, but we don't get involved well, in Well, there's a guy, a fictitious guy named Theo, T-H-E-O, Sullivan. And, uh, and uh, let make sure you tell him that you saw it here. But uh, he is, um, he, he or she, well, whoever it is, is um, not fake news. He's exposing the fake news. Extremely knowledgeable. Extremely knowledgeable, which yes. I know I am, and I know, but I'm no, not, not as not, technical. Not to that and anybody who knows me knows no. I don't write like that. No, I can't form. I I I don't. I can't even formulate a sentence. This is what we call in-depth reporting. <laughs> well, Theo Sullivan, yes, <laughs> um, and he is uh, bouncing <clears> off <throat> of the so-called. Just remember when you're reading stuff that the mayor is this and the mayor is that. Just just read it thoroughly because it's not it's accusations and accusations all can be all allegation. It's nothing is. Do you really think the? I, I love the part where they went to the FBI and the FBI said, "Thank oh. you very much. We're going to investigate." Oh, absolutely. That's not what the FBI does. No, no, the <laughs> FBI. Does, yeah. It, if you walked in, they wouldn't even. Well, tell if you. this particular person walked in, I have yeah. a criminal a harassment order against him. Do you yes. know? You do yeah, know that. Yeah, that is. A I'm in the third year it of the, the criminal. Third year that so, he's been in and that's effect. a bully thing. Right. What he did to me. Right. And so, so, uh, so, so I proved that he is a bully. Yeah. So I know Bobby's going to see this, and Bobby's going to be very, very upset with us. Wow. Well, hey. <laughs> Hey. But anyways, so if you're reading the fake news and you're believing these things because the city has changed and you're blaming uh, and they're kicking the crap out of the mayor and all of all of the members wow. are, are doing this, think about it as a really if they were, why doesn't Channel 4, 5, and 7, Fox 25, NBC exactly. 10. Let, let, why, why doesn't the Globe and the Herald have it? Can why I, doesn't the Somerville Journal have it? Can I explain this a little more clearly? Yeah. Criminal allegations have been made by this alleged newspaper, which if you read it, you get dizzy because it's, it's, there's no layout to it. There's no legitimate reporters right. to it. There's no uh, journalistic well, intent to it. Well, you know, he does claim to be a journalist. Yeah, but we, I'd like to know what his credentials are, because uh, even I, I don't claim to be a journalist. Really? And I, I want to see uh, the, where he was educated as a journalist. But that, that aside, criminal allegations have been made against the mayor. 
Not one of them has been proven. Not one. There's no evidence has been presented in the uh, yes. a fake newspaper. So I would uh, look at this askance. And your assertions that the Globe hasn't picked it up, that the Herald hasn't picked it up. I mean, my God, if there was anything there, that I think even the Herald would. Well, the Globe uh, would have picked it up because it's yeah. not a great, uh, I mean, I, I, yeah. even the dig, even the weekly dig, who is not a big fan of Joe Crittatoni. You're right. They've come out twice, and they've blown the fake news. <laughs> call way. it a nothing burger. Yeah, it's a nothing. That's exactly what they call it was a nothing burger. The, all this is is a, I believe, and we, I believe that it's an attempt at extortion. Well, I, I think it goes beyond that. I think it's a personal vendetta. And is it, that your opinion? Yeah, in the, that's your in, opinion. In the Italian word, yes, my, my opinion. But is. you're not Italian. No. You but can't I do that. Oh, you're other, married to one. Uh, yeah, but other, other members of this... Uh, Conspiracy, I, I believe, are right. Italian. And I, Look, I all really we all we asking people is we, we, we've got only got a couple of minutes. We're running out of yeah. real time here. I guess I saw. Yeah, <laughs> they're giving Look. you the, the yes. hand signals. Look, read, read, and read again, and realize that if it was true, it would have been in the Globe. It would have been in the Herald. It would have been in four, five, and seven. It would have been in the Dig. It's not. So all we can say is, if you're talking about fake news, this is fake news. That's fake news. The Solvable Times is the best paper because we... We are the paper record. We are the paper record. Yes. So anyways, I want to thank you, Ross, for coming. My pleasure. Um, we re that time went by fast. It did. And uh, uh, my name is Donald Norton from the Norton Group and from the Solvable Times. Ross Bluen from the Colony Real Estate and from the Solvable Times. I'm the publisher of the Solvable Times. Well, uh, yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> Even Donald admits it. Yeah, yeah, he you. is. Well, for now you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, and we wish everybody a get out and vote in September in the primary. There's an ele a school committee race in Ward <laughs> Four. You've got I uh, mean Ward One rather Ward One, and uh, and a mayor's race, uh, and and support the. Uh, I, I I know we shouldn't say this, but you got to support Joe Crittatoni. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.